Whether it's Nvidia, AMD, or even an Intel GPU, they are hard to find right now. Everything is out of stock or being scalped for double the price. In times like this, if you're looking to upgrade your streaming PC, one of the best things that you can do is just wait. Hang on to the equipment that you have and optimize it. Today, I wanna run through 15 optimizations for your PC that will get it running at least a little bit better than it was before. So whether that's gonna get you a couple of extra frames in your game or stop your stream from lagging so bad, hopefully these things can help make your stream look a little bit more professional. If you haven't been here before, welcome to the back office of the Pixel Pub. Usually we do our videos from down there, but tonight I wanted to show you a few things. So I hope you have your notepad ready to take some notes. Cheers, let's get into it. To start everything off, we're gonna talk about some things that will affect your entire system performance and stability. These are gonna be some things that any, almost anybody can do and it's going to help everything, whether we're talking about your games running smoother or your stream running smoother. We'll get into a couple of OBS tweaks just a little bit later. So we're gonna focus on Windows. I'm running right now Windows 11, so if you're running Windows 10, should be very, very similar, but there might be some things that, uh, that look just a little bit different. So one of the first things we want to do is make sure we are up to date. Go ahead, open the start menu, type in the word update, and that's going to check us for some Windows updates. And it does look like I've got the uh, February cumulative update uh, preview for Windows 11 right now. Um, so I will go ahead and do that later after I'm done uh, recording. But being up to date is going to be one of those super helpful things. It's going to get some of the newest software, not only going to keep you safer on your computer by downloading Windows Defender updates, but also going to keep things running smoother with the most up-to-date drivers. I'm not sure what these HP USB things are, but we're just going to leave them alone too. Speaking of drivers, you're going to want to update your graphics card drivers. If you have an NVIDIA card, open up the NVIDIA app. If you're running AMD or Intel graphics cards, they have a very similar app as well. Make sure you hit the drivers tab on the side and here it will tell you if you have an updated dr graphics driver to download and, re and, and install. I'm completely up to date right now, so it gives me the option to reinstall this version of the driver. Otherwise, if you have a new version of the driver, make sure you install it. These are going to be things that actively impact your games. These are better optimizations and things that are going to directly get you more FPS. Make sure you update your graphics graphics drivers. Moving along quickly to number two, we are going to disable any unnecessary startup applications. Right click on the start button, click on task manager, and this is going to pull up our processes. If you go down to startup apps, this is one where it looks just a little bit different on Windows 10, but the same type of process uh, applies. I always sort by enabled versus disabled so that I can kind of scroll through here and see what these are all the apps that start up and are running when I start my computer up fresh. So anything that you don't need, anything that you don't want actively running when you start your computer up, make sure you click on it and hit the disable button up here on the top. This is going to make your startup faster. It's also going to just save you precious resources when your computer is running. If you don't have all of these applications running, your computer is just going to run better. For number three, we are going to check and make sure that your power plan is optimized. So open up that start menu again, type in power plan and click that option, which will open up control panel. Here, you're going to hit change advanced power settings. That opens up this tiny little box that can't be resized. And this is going to look different depending on your motherboard, depending on your computer, depending if you're on a desktop or a laptop. So make sure you look up your specific model of computer and make sure you select some of these options that make the most sense for you. Ideally, what you should be doing is making sure you have a high performance or boosted power plan turned on. You don't want anything that is balanced or in power saver mode. 
We want to make sure that under the processor power management option that the maximum processor state is set to 100%. Otherwise, your processor will never be able to be 100% utilized, which is not ideal. All right, number four on the list here, we wanna make sure that you're running the correct refresh rate on your computer. This is one of those things that I can't believe so many people miss. All you have to do is right click on your desktop, hit display settings, and select the monitor that you want to update. Scroll all the way down to advanced display, and then we're going to make sure right here under the choose refresh rate option, we have the correct refresh rate selected for our monitor. If you have a 144 hertz monitor, but you're sitting at 60 hertz, you are getting 60 frames per second. It doesn't matter how fast your graphics card is. It doesn't matter what the game FPS is set to, you're getting 60 frames per second. So make sure that you have this set at the correct setting at the highest setting that your monitor allows. Optimization number five coming in. This one, we are going to verify that your RAM is running as fast as it can. The faster that your RAM is running, the faster your computer is gonna run. So the first thing that we want to do is open up a command prompt. Uh, type in CMD into, the, into your start menu and you're going to use these commands, which I'll leave down in the description below. WMIC space memory chip space get space speed. And this is going to get our memory speeds. I have two sticks with a max speed of 6,000 mega transfers. So this is the max speed that they can be running. But we want to now check what speed they are actually running at. So we're gonna run the command WMIC space memory chip space get space configured clock speed. And we can see here that my two sticks of RAM are also currently configured to be running at 6,000 mega transfers. If your memory is not running at that top speed that it can be running, there's a handful of things that you can do. Most likely you're gonna have to go into your BIOS and enable XMP or whichever technology, your RAM, your motherboard, your processor, all of your computer is going to be using. This is where I would recommend, again, looking up your motherboard, looking up what the BIOS looks like and what that setting looks like. Typically, it's as easy as rebooting into your BIOS, flipping the switch on XMP to enabled and not disabled. Reboot your computer and it is enabled and your memory is going to be running at its top speed. Optimization number six, we want to make sure that our computer is running and not being thermal throttled. If your computer is a little bit older, if it's a little bit dusty, if, it, if there's anything blocking any of the airflow, any of the fans, make sure that you clean it out. Clean out the dust. If you have to go and repaste the GPU or the CPU, um, adding some new thermal paste, if that hasn't been done in a couple of years, can help keep things cool and running a little bit better. What we wanna do to make sure that they're not running too hot is use something like HW Info. This is something that can give us the speeds of everything as well as temperatures. If there's any thermal throttling going on, if these temperatures are getting too hot when we're playing games, that's something that we wanna fix, that's something that we wanna take care of. The cooler that we can keep the equipment inside your computer, the more efficiently it's gonna be running. And again, there's no optimal temperatures for all hardware. If you have a specific GPU or CPU, look up what the rated temperatures are, look up what other people tend to be getting for temperatures under load and see if your computer is matching those temperatures. But either way, the cooler that we can get these to run, the better your computer is gonna perform. And lastly, under the PC optimizations, if you absolutely want to get every ounce of performance out of your computer possible, look into overclocking. In the last couple of years, overclocking has become very, very simple to do. This is the NVIDIA app. All of the other apps, things like MSI Afterburner, make this really, really easy to do. As long as you have hardware that supports overclocking, it's as easy as moving a couple of sliders around. Again, I'm not gonna give you any specific numbers, but this is one of those things that you can uh, look up your specific hardware, watch YouTube videos of people actually doing it with the hardware that you're running to see if that's something that is even worth doing. Because sometimes even undervolting, um, adding more 
more power, changing different clock speeds sometimes doesn't even get you any kind of performance uplift. So make sure you check it out with your hardware and see what other people are getting before you try this. This is one of those things I would definitely do my research and, and be ready to play around with this a little bit before you get it right. Uh, but if you do get it right and this adds some, some very, very valuable power to your aging hardware, this could be a lifesaver in this time where we're, where we're not able to upgrade graphics cards as easily as we used to be able to. Another really quick tip here, make sure that you are using Ethernet, a wired cable from your computer to your router, if at all possible. Wi-Fi is just never going to be as fast as a hard wire straight to your router. There's no other configurations that need to be done on the computer for this one. If you can run a cable to your router, that is almost always going to be faster connection as well as more stable. A heck of a lot less opportunities for there to be any kind of interference. All right, let's talk about OBS now. There's a couple of things that you can do to really optimize OBS to make sure that it is running at its absolute best and that you are getting the most performance out of your game and your stream is lagging as little as possible. First thing to do if you are noticing some lag is to enable performance mode. When you right click on the preview here, if you just uncheck enable preview, this is going to hide the preview, which means your graphics card does not have to render that anymore. And while you're playing a game and this is just sitting in the background, it's not taking up valuable resources by rendering the video on the screen or in the background. Another tip is to run OBS as an administrator. You can do this each and every time by right clicking on OBS and hitting run as administrator. Otherwise, if you go find the OBS executable in your program files, if you right click on that and hit properties, then we're gonna click on the compatibility tab and we are going to click run this program as an administrator. And that means every single time that you open this application now, Windows is going to run the program as an administrator. And this helps so that Windows doesn't start lowering the priority of OBS, giving it less resources and, and making it lag if it doesn't have what it needs to get the job done. Another thing that I don't think a lot of people do, this doesn't necessarily make OBS any faster, but it does help us diagnose issues if you are seeing issues. If you hit the view tab up at the top and come down to the stats button, this is going to be a floating dock. You can also dock it as well. Um, this is going to show us all of the stats of not only your computer, but of OBS as well. This is going to tell us if you're dropping any frames, if your network is lagging, it's going to give us some really good ideas of what exactly is failing and what we need to do to be able to fix it. If you're coming to somebody like me asking for stream help because your stream is lagging, this is one of those things that I hope you would have opened up and taken a look at already and, and been able to see exactly what is going on with your stream so that we can help diagnose it even quicker. I forget what number this is. I didn't number them on my notes, uh, but this optimization here is can actually be really handy. And I think, again, a lot of people forget this. If you have too many sources and too many things going on in a scene at any one given time, it takes extra resources. Every little thing that you have running on your computer takes its own resources. Uh, if you have a bunch of extra window captures, if you have a bunch of extra cameras that you're not using, make sure you remove those sources from your scenes. The simpler that your scenes are, the more efficient OBS is going to be running. I know that noise gates and noise suppression and all of these different filters on your microphone make it sound better. I know that every streamer help guru out there tells you to add all of these things, but you know what this also does? It takes CPU usage to run all of these things. If your machine is lagging, if your stream is lagging, try disabling some of these, try removing some of them, and see if that gives you any extra bandwidth to play with. If you click File and Settings within OBS, this is where the real magic is, right? On the Output tab, 
our video bit rate here to our stream is going to be what really, really contributes to the quality of our stream as well as the hardware that it takes to run that stream. So Twitch, unless you're a partner, takes a maximum of 6,000 kilobit per second of a stream. So that should be the maximum that you're probably going to be using unless you're a partner, unless you're streaming to other platforms that allow a higher bit rate. Set that probably to 6,000. You also want to make sure that depending on what kind of graphics card you have, that you are encoding your stream with that graphics card. And you'll want to hit one of these hardware encoders. The NVENC is going to be your NVIDIA graphics cards. They are some of the best encoders for streaming, at least to Twitch. If you have an AV1 encoding available, if you're streaming to YouTube or any other platform that supports that, AV1 coding is definitely a lot more efficient and gets a a lot better quality out of the same amount of bit rate. I would definitely recommend using that if it's an option. Using the hardware is going to use your graphics card where the software X26 is going to be using your CPU. Most modern Nvidia graphics cards come with dedicated video encoder chips on them now. So you definitely wanna be using that setting uh, for the video encoder option here. So there are some really, really good, really simple, almost anybody can do optimizations for Windows as well as OBS. The next place to look for optimizations are going to be your games. But again, this is one of those things that is going to be very, very game dependent. So look at your favorite games, look at the ones that you wanna play, look at the ones that are lagging for you. Do a YouTube search for those specific games and find out how to optimize them for the best FPS, for the best streaming experience. For the most part, you'll wanna be turning off ray tracing, turn things like shadows down that aren't gonna make any difference in, uh, in your game. Um, but is going to make your hardware run a whole lot better. While I hope that we will be able to see more graphics cards being available soon at, and actually at reasonable prices, because right now, let's be honest, they aren't. Let me know down in the comments if I missed any optimizations and uh, drop them down there and help your fellow streamers out. If you absolutely need to look at upgrading your machine, make sure you check out this video I did over here with six solutions to what you should be doing if you really, really, really need to upgrade your machine right now. We're not in a good PC hardware market space right now, but uh, there definitely are some things that can be done. Cheers, we'll see you over there.